Guatemala's president has announced that the Central American country will move its embassy in Israel to Jerusalem, becoming the first nation to follow the lead of President Trump in ordering the change. Guatemala was one of nine nations that voted with the United States and Israel on Thursday when the UN General Assembly adopted a non-binding resolution denouncing Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Trump did not set any timetable for moving the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and neither did Guatemalan President Jimmy Morales. In a post on his official Facebook account, Morales said Sunday that after talks with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, he decided to instruct Guatemala's foreign ministry to move the embassy. Palestinian Foreign Minister Riyad al morki criticized the decision, saying Morales was dragging his country to the wrong side of history by committing a flagrant violation of international law. Guatemala and Israel have long had close ties, especially in security matters and arms sales. Associated Press A suicide bomber struck outside the Afghan National Intelligence Agency headquarters near the presidential palace in Kabul on Monday, killing six civilians, officials said. The Islamic State militant group asserted responsibility for the attack through its AMAQ news agency and said, 30 elements from the Afghan National Directorate of Security, were killed. The bombing comes a week after militants stormed a training center of the agency in the capital. An interior ministry spokesman said three civilians also were wounded in Monday's Rushhor attack in Shash Dara, a Kabul neighborhood with several government officers and a heavy security presence. Police cordoned off the area, which links eastern parts of Kabul to the city center. Witnesses said the attack occurred outside the main entrance to the security compound. In recent months, Kabul has been repeatedly targeted by suicide bombers with ties to the Islamic State and the Taliban. Sharif will lead an emergency decree in Turkey that grants immunity to civilians deemed to have helped thwart a July 2016 coup attempt sparked an outcry on Monday. Critics fear it could lead to violence through impunity, including the possible formation of death squads. The Cree says people who acted to suppress the attempted coup would not face prosecution. Previously, such immunity applied only to officials and law enforcement. The government blames U.S.-based Muslim cleric Fethullah Gulen for the coup attempt and declared a state of emergency in its aftermath. Gulen denies the allegations. Ex-President Abdullah Gul, an ally of Turkey's current president, called the law worrisome and said it should be re-evaluated. Mahir Unal, speaker of the ruling party, said that the law was clear in applying only to the events of July 15, 16, 2016, and that its scope is limited. About 50,000 people have been arrested since the coup attempt for alleged links to Gulen and terrorism. Associated Press Vietnam evacuates hundreds of thousands ahead of storm Hundreds of thousands of people in Vietnam's Mekong Delta were evacuated as the region braced for Typhoon Tempen after the storm left more than 160 people dead in the Philippines. Weather forecasters were expecting the Delta's southern tip to be in Tempen's path. Over the weekend, Tempen unleashed landslides and flash floods in the Philippines, and more than 97,000 people remained in 261 evacuation centers across the southern Philippines, the National Disaster Management Agency said. Military court in Bahrain sentences six Shiites to death A Bahraini military court sentenced six Shiite men to death and revoked their citizenship after they were convicted on charges of forming a terrorist cell and plotting to assassinate a military official, the Bahrain news agency reported. The court sentenced seven others linked to the case to seven years in jail and revoked their citizenship, while five were acquitted, BNA added. Bahrain has had occasional unrest since 2011, when authorities crushed protests, mainly by the Shiite majority, which demands a bigger role in running the country. From News Services